for somebody. It may be all of you. I don't know. There's somebody in this place today that feels like they're stuck. You feel like you're in quicksand. You feel like you can't even move your feet. The Lord says to lift up your voice and to praise Him. And He will, he will get you unstuck. <laughs> he will pull you out of that miry clay. So I don't know. If that's you this morning, everybody just raise your hands. So I won't sing Lenny. Raise your hands. Lord, in the name of Jesus, every person in this place, I declare freedom in their lives. I declare that you pull them out of the clay. Whoever is stuck, God, get them unstuck by the blood of Jesus. So let's sing that again. It may look like. It may look like I'm surrounded. Come on. Jesus is surrounding you right now. It may look like I'm surrounded. Oh, by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm
Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. It was the ransom he paid for me more. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, I will you grace. Wash it over me You have made me new Now life begins with you It's your endless love Pouring down on us You have made us new Darkness rejoices as though heaven had lost. But when Jesus rose when the freedom in come on, and death was arrested in my life. Changes dark 
darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring when you walk into the room. She's here today. Every heart starts burning, and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you.
press into you today, Lord. <laughs> we press into you, Jesus. Oh, heaven is here. Heaven is here this morning. Reach out. Grab on to the hem of his garment. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you whole this morning. We reach out to you, God. We reach out to you, Jesus. The hem of your garment. God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. I see heaven waiting this place. I see.
stay in this place of intimacy. The Lord is drawing us to him this morning. He's drawing us to his feet to worship him, to worship you at your feet, Lord. Lord, let us be like Mary, to sit at your feet. Every day to day, God. 
of the miracles of life around us. Yes, Lord, life. Point the arrows to your name. Let our voices rise. Oh, creation cry.
Jesus, we worship you, God. We worship you, Lord. You are holy. You are holy. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that right now in this moment, right now in this moment, you're being set free. That everything you need is right here in this moment. That you've been searching and you've been searching and you've been searching, but it's right here. It's right now. It's right now. Oh, Jesus. It's right here. It's right now. Yes, God. Oh, you're all I need. You're all I need. You're all I need, oh God. Oh, you're all I need. Tim and Christian, I have a word for you this morning. The Lord says that he has equipped you for such a time as this. That there is, there is great purpose in what you have gone through. And God is going to use you in a great and mighty way. Your humbleness and your genuineness is going to draw people to you. And your compassion, your compassion for others is just going to, it's going to be like, like living waters just flowing freely to other people. And, and the Lord says, do not be scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> Don't be worried because he's giving you everything you need, everything you need to do what he's called you to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Melissa. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Wow. Holy. Hallelujah. He's holy. Come on. Yes, holy. 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 He's holy. holy. Because the rocks will cry holy. out if you don't do it. Holy, holy, holy. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Get up. Thanks, guys. Hallelujah. He is holy. Yes. Praise Lord. the Lord. Praise the Lord. This world needs Jesus. In my head, that sounded a lot louder. This world needs Jesus. This, this world needs Jesus, friends. That's why we're here. We're here to worship God. Yes, Lord. And to and to allow him to equip us yes, to bring him to the world. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, thank you. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your manifest presence in this place today. I thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you are equipping us. Thank you. As believers, we choose to come here. We are here because we choose to be here because we are believers. We believe. Jesus. Hallelujah. Right now, I just pray over every person here and every person watching. I declare supernatural peace to overcome you. I declare strength. The Lord equips you with strength. He girds you with strength. Your strength and your power are from the Lord. That's all from the word of God. Praise the Lord. 
So we just, we just choose to go out in your strength, God, not in our own. <laughs> not in our own because I don't want to depend on my own. <laughs> I would have reason to be afraid if I wanted to depend on my own strength. No, no. I'm going out in the strength of the Lord and the peace of the Lord. So I declare peace, supernatural peace and strength over us today in the name of Jesus. I declare increase. I declare increase in finances. I declare increase in manifestation of revelation and insight. Increase in manifestation of the supernatural, Lord, you've placed in their hearts and minds. I can just see there's seeds you've placed in hearts and minds this morning, God. And I just declare increase in a manifestation of those supernatural yes. giftings and declarations in Jesus name. Amen. All right. We're going to take a five minute break. So today we resume Sunday school. So elementary kids, you may parents, you can go ahead and go back, check your kids in and we will resume Sunday school today. And that will go until the end of service. And we have, we're set up real nice. We've got lots of space back there, everybody. So no problem. We've got a uh, buckets up here at the front for offerings and tithes. You may bring those up here to the altar. Or you uh, can also put them in the lockbox by the door back there. We'll see you in five minutes. Welcome to Victory Center Church. Our goal is to ensure that you stay connected with the church and continue growing in your faith from wherever you are. To do this, we provide a variety of resources such as our website at ivictorycenter.org, mobile app for Android and iOS, Roku channel, and Apple TV app. On our website, you can find out more information about our mission and core values. You can also find a brief overview of our current areas of ministry. You can formally join the Victory Center Church family by providing some brief contact information. Additionally, if you would like to be added to our mailing list, you can check the optional checkbox at the bottom. You can view a calendar containing all of our upcoming events on the events page. Additional updates and blog posts can be seen on our news page. If you are unable to visit us in person on a Sunday morning, feel free to watch us online through the live stream page under the media section. The best part of our website is the recordings page, which offers on-demand access to our full catalog of hundreds of videos. All these videos can also be found in the media tab of our app. Tap on a video and press the download button to continue listening to the word offline. Our app also offers the same access to event updates and the live stream posted on our website. If you are interested in a more immersive experience for watching any of our videos, check out our Roku channel and Apple TV app. Victory Center Church offers a way to give from wherever you are. Here's a quick guide on how to give through our mobile app. First, if you have not already downloaded the Victory Center Church app, you'll need to open the app labeled App Store on iOS or the app labeled Play Store on Android. Tap on the search bar and enter Victory Center Church. Tap the Get button on iOS or the Install button on Android, then return home. You can now tap on the new app icon to open our app. To give, tap on the middle button on the tab bar on the bottom. Tap the zero in the center of the screen and a number pad will slide up for you to enter an amount. After that, you can tap the frequency at which you would like to give the selected amount. You can swipe left to reveal more options. Tap the next button and you'll be redirected to your phone's browser to complete the payment. You can choose to continue by signing up with an email or using your pre-existing Facebook account. Enter in all the applicable information and tap sign up. You'll then need to confirm your account by going to the mail app. Tap the email from Subsplash with a subject which reads, Welcome. Then tap the Confirm Email Address button. This will redirect you back to the browser where you can finish setting up your account by linking it to a credit or debit card or a bank account. Upon entering the required information, tap Link. You can then finish your gift by tapping the Give button on the bottom of the screen. Giving online at Victory Center has never been easier. Here's a quick tutorial on how to get started. First, open a browser such as Google Chrome or Safari. Type ivictorycenter.org in the search bar and hit enter. You will see the homepage of our website. Next, click the top right tab in the navigation bar labeled Giving. You'll be redirected to a page where you can start filling out your payment information. 
Start by clicking the zero in the center of the screen and typing your amount. Then select the font you would like to give it to by clicking on the round button with the default title of general. In the drop down, you can choose from the list of our current funds. Then choose the frequency at which you would like to give the selected amount by clicking on one of the listed options. More options can be revealed by clicking and dragging left or right. After confirming your information, click Next. You'll be redirected to our payment processing provider's website called Subsplash. You can choose to create an account with an email or pre-existing Facebook account. Additionally, if you already have an account, you can click on the user icon in the top right and select the login option. If this is your first time giving, select on one of the two options provided to sign up. Fill in the required information, then click sign up. You'll then need to confirm your account by going to an email provider such as Gmail. Tap the email from Subsplash with the subject which reads, Welcome. Then tap the confirm email address button. This will bring you to a web page which confirms your account. To finish, go back to the tab with the original payment and refresh it. You may need to re-enter your payment info. After doing so, click next. This will direct you to a page where you can finish setting up your account by linking it to a credit or debit card or a bank account. Upon entering the required information, click link. You can then finish your gift by clicking the give button on the bottom of the screen. Giving online at Victory Center has never been easier. Here's a quick tutorial on how to get started. First, open a browser such as Google Chrome or Safari. Type ivictorycenter.org in the search bar and hit enter. You will see the homepage of our website. Next, click the top right tab in the navigation bar labeled Giving. You'll be redirected to a page where you can start filling out your payment information. Start by clicking the zero in the center of the screen and typing your amount. Then select the fund you would like to give to by clicking on the round button with the default title of General. In the drop down, you can choose from a list of our current funds. Then choose the frequency at which you would like to give the selected amount by clicking on one of the listed options. More options can be revealed by clicking and dragging left or right. After confirming your information, click Next. You'll be redirected to our payment processing provider's website called Subsplash. You can choose to create an account with an email or pre-existing Facebook account. Additionally, if you already have an account, you can click on the user icon in the top right and select the login option. If this is your first time giving, started here. Praise the Lord. I love uh, saying hi to everybody. <laughs> it's awesome. All right. Yes, Gary Price is doing Bible study tomorrow. All right. So, Sons of Victory tomorrow at 11 a.m. right here at Victory Center Church. And. We have Wednesday night service. We'll have prayer first at 6 p.m. and then Bible study at 6.30 p.m. On Saturday, the 11th at 9 a.m., we have a men's get-together. What is this? Uh, what are we calling this? Men of Victory? Yes. Men of Victory. Ah, they're copying us, ladies. <laughs> Men of Victory at? Men of Victory. Kurt's Move. house. Kurt, what time? 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Are we eating? Are we eating when we get there? Absolutely. Okay. There's food and men eating food and sharing the word. It's going to be awesome. It's at Kurt's. Yes. If you need directions, talk to Kurt or myself and I'll yeah, or get directed. Be there. Yeah. And Judy won't be there. <laughs> so. Praise the Lord. Kurt's, talk to Kurt after service immediately. We're going to do right. this. Praise and then the Lord. Also, tomorrow night is an express image tomorrow night at 6.30. So it will be an express image service tomorrow night at 6.30. You can either watch it here live in person, or you can watch the live stream on that as well, or the replay. This happens in action as we're up here a lot in of action. times. <laughs> oh, also, in action, in action. Uh, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Saturday. Saturday, moving forward. Uh, we also have another service at the Capitol Saturday uh, with, with uh, Apostle King and... Um, a lot of different folks who've been coming in is Carl and Matt. And actually, Matt's going to be leading an evangelism team before the service next Saturday. If you are interested in doing some evangelism out on the streets around the Capitol, please talk to me, um, and we'll get you set up. But that'll be, there'll be some training and a lot of hands-on, praise God. What time is the worship service at the Capitol? Is that 1 o'clock? 145. 145. So the evangelism okay. team will be meeting around noonish, I believe, but we'll, I can get you more information if you're interested in that. Talk to me. 
And again, Matt Brown's going to be leading that team. Uh, many of you know who Matt Brown is, and uh, he's a wonderful guy. I've known him for a long time. And he is uh, definitely an evangelistic, uh, spirit-filled, operating in words and knowledge. He'll, he'll kind of yeah. do some, do some hands-on training with you and get you equipped and activated to do the work of the kingdom and to preach the gospel and to, and to bring in the harvest. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that's what that's we're right. Doing. Praise the Lord. So again, on Saturday is a recap. At, uh, Saturday <laughs> 11th, 9 a.m. at uh, Kurt Dugan's home, Woo! hosting Men of Victory Breakfasts for the men. Um, if you need that address, you can reach out to one of us, Kurt, or us. Yep. Sure. Praise the Lord. We can do that. And then at uh, around noonish, there will be an evangelism team meeting. If you're interested in signing up for that, talk to Pastor Roger. And then at 1:45 at the Capitol, there will be a worship service that uh, we'll be participating in. That. Amen. Yeah. And then we'll also have a church again next Sunday. Yep, and then we'll have church on Sunday the 12th. <laughs> and we're going to keep having Oh, wait, church. wait, and another big announcement. <laughs> another big announcement. We have the Kingdom Conference coming up. Yay. Okay. I, I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> okay. Oh, you haven't gotten there yet? Okay. Nope. So I'll Ladies of Victory is Saturday the 18th, 9 a.m., and that's going to be hosted by Pastor Judy Dugan. So our worship pastor here, that's going to be at her house again. That's Saturday the 18th at 9 a.m., Ladies of Victory. And then Kingdom Conference will King, be the following week. Kingdom Conference 26th. 20, I'm sorry, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, the Kingdom Conference. And that's, uh, we're going to be talking about bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. It's going to be intense, and it's going to be really good. Uh, Apostle King's coming in, and we're going to be having some various speakers coming in to do that. And then also, again, that Saturday, we're also having another uh, revival service at the Capitol, okay? But that Saturday morning, this is going to be Saturday morning on the morning of the uh, 25th here, we're going to be doing a, 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 a supernatural evangelism training that Saturday morning here. Again, Matt Brown, Matt, and Carl and myself are going to be leading that up. So Time to equip the saints, friends. Praise the Lord. We got to, yeah, it's time to go. It's time to go. It's, it's and go those, time. Uh, it's go time. It's yeah. go time. And uh, 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, that's the Kingdom Conference. There will be day sessions as well as evening sessions. Yeah, 10 a.m. Okay? and 2 p.m. Um, and we'll have posters printed and out there. Are we are we putting anything out on the Facebook site and stuff or I think we website? Did. We did already. Maybe, okay. maybe not. If you're asking me, <laughs> I'm not in charge of that, so I don't know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We'll have something out there if we don't already, and we'll get some a uh, couple flyers out here. So, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. All right. So, I just uh, I agree with you, God, yeah. in your anointing over Pastor Roger, my husband, and. I declare increase, increase in his ability to deliver that revelation to the people, God, increase in his sensitivity to you and your voice, Lord. I declare increase in our hearts and our ability to receive your word spoken forth through my husband. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> well, this, I really feel like the Spirit's burning inside me to release some things to you guys this morning. Woo! All right, and even right now. <clears throat> Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> I'm just going to I'm just going to start John 16, okay? Well, you turning I'll give you a minute to turn in your Bible to John 16. And then I'm going to go to a different scripture. Matthew, uh, you don't have to go there, but go, if you, Matthew 11, 28, 29, and 30. Jesus said, um, come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon, you know, t t take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, he said. Learn from me, for I am meek and humble in my spirit. And you will find rest for your souls. Okay? Yes. Rest for your souls. Because my, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Okay? Yep. Jesus had a light. He had a... <laughs> think about this. This guy's... Jesus came to redeem humanity. <laughs> and he's saying, eh, my, my yoke is light. My burden is easy. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, Third John 1, 2 says that 
you are God's beloved and you are supposed to prosper in all things and be in good health as your soul prospers. Amen? We need to have a prosperous soul. You know, your mind, your will, your emotions. We need to have a prosperous, uh, you know, Romans 12, 2 says that we are, um, we, we, we become transformed out of conformity. Because we're all conformed into this image of this world to one degree or another. The world image, the world system, the world, what the world has pressed upon us. Who the world tells you you are, you know. But when we get born again, we don't depend on the world system to de define us. We are defined Again, we talked about this last week. If you didn't get a chance to, 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 to catch that last week, uh, we are defined by our new birth. We're, we're born again. We become spiritually reborn. Now, uh, now our definition, our, our, uh, our identity has to be in our relationship to our Father. Right. We, we become identified by who we are in him because he's our father. Amen. So we're, we've been born into supernatural royalty. Amen. We, we've, been, we've been born again into as a, as a king and a priest. Amen. We've been, we've been reborn. But that, the, 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 to the depth that you experience that depends on to the depth that you're willing to renew your mind by the word of God and experience the transformation. Okay. For, for, for centuries, there has been so much dormant power laying asleep in the church. Asleep in the church. There's been so much complacency in the church. There's been so much complacency in the believer. And it's been to the detriment of humanity. All creation groans for the revelation of the manifestation of the sons of God. There's a revelation that's going to lead to manifestation yes. of who you've been created to be. You've been recreated to be in, in the image of Christ. Amen. If you follow the genealogy of, of Jesus back in Luke, in, in the beginning of the book of Luke, you'll see that Jesus, they trace his genealogy back all the way to Adam. And it said, and Adam was the son of God. Adam was the son of God, created to be the son of God. Look it up. Amen. <laughs> Not just some lump of clay that was created to serve God mindlessly. Not some mindless servant robot that God created. He created a son. He created a daughter. He created Adam and Eve to be his children. Amen. But when the enemy, when the thief comes in, the thief comes in and he steals their identity. Adam didn't know who he was. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came to bring us restoration, spiritual rebirth, spiritual reconnection with who we are. Man, the world needs to know who we are. Because when we can show who we are, they're going to experience what we are. Amen. Well, yes, what he is in us. Exactly. Amen. Because the truth, the truth is, why did Jesus come? He came to reveal the Father. Yep. That's what he yes. came to do. He came to give us a revelation of the Father so we could have a revelation of ourselves. Amen. We've been created in his image and in his likeness. Adam was created in the image and the likeness of God. Then he blew, blew the pneuma, the breath, the spirit of the Lord went into him. And it, it brought that life into him. The, the life of God, the Zoe life, the life of God was in Adam and was in Eve, and they spoke the word, and, 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 and the authority of God was in them, and they created, and they, and they demonstrated, and they ruled, and they reigned, and they had dominion, because God had given them that dominion mandate. But when they choose to willfully obey, and actually it wasn't when Adam chose to willfully obey, Eve was deceived. Adam chose it. Right. Praise God. That was a mistake. <laughs> but you know what? That was not a mistake that the Lord had not anticipated. That's right. yeah. Because Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the very foundations of this world were laid. Yeah. Because God looked forward and he saw. He saw what he was going to do. And he said, wow, I'm going to create a family. Sons and daughters. Yeah. Mm. 
and then they're going to screw it all up. <laughs> but I'm going to love them anyway. Because that's what you do with your kids. You love them anyway. And Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit, who are three in one, were in complete agreement. And Jesus said, yeah, let's do it. Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world were even laid. With you in mind, to bring you back into revelation knowledge, to bring you back into transformation, to bring you back into manifestation as a child of God. This world was not created for the enemy. This world was created for you and me, the children of God. God, Psalms makes it very clear. He said, the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the sons of man. Wow. We, in Christ Jesus, have a dominion mandate. Luke 4, 43, Jesus said, I have come to bring the, the declaration of the kingdom of God, the good news, good news. The kingdom is here. The kingdom is now. It came with Christ Jesus, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Okay, king of kings, not just the king of England, the king of you, because you're a king. Right. You're a priest. He's our king. And, yeah. and he's brought us into the kingdom of heaven. Now, we, amen, we are the children of God. We have his spirit within us. Amen. His, his spirit life. We are connected to the zoe. We are connected in the spirit. Now. But when we lack revelation knowledge of who we are and what we're supposed to be, we will continue to set our mouth, which is the rudder of our life, according to James 3 and 4, we will continue to set our mouth to the rocks. We will continue to set our mouth to the reef. We will continue to run aground. But when we realize that our tongue is the rudder of our life because that's how God created us. How did, he, how did God create? How did your father create this world? He spoke it. Yep. Spoke yeah. it into existence. He spoke it into existence. Spoke it. Hebrews 1, 1 through 3 says that Jesus is the exact image of the invisible God. He is the, he, the father has spoken to us through various ways, the prophets, the law, all these different things. But now he has spoken to us by his son, who is the exact representation, the exact radiance of his glory, who sustains all things by the power of his word. Everything in this universe is sustained by the word of God. Everything. Everything. So your tongue, James 3, 4, is the rudder of your life that steers your life in the direction you choose. Proverbs tells us that, the, that, that, that uh, life and death are in the power of our tongue. And we get to choose the fruit we eat. We can eat the fruit of life or we can eat the fruit of death. Right now, we need to be speaking life. Amen. Can, can we come into agreement with this? As the children of God, we need to be speaking life and life only. You know, I understand. I understand. Sometimes we want to say things like... It's only going to get worse. If you say so, brother, watch your tongue, man. I'm just telling you, watch your tongue. Jesus said, you're going to experience trouble, but be of good cheer. Ooh. Right. Right. I get to be happy? <laughs> Why? Because he's overcome the world. He's overcome. He's overcome. He's overcome. And that victory is in you. You need to bring it forth. Matthew 12, or, uh, yeah, Matthew 12, 35, you need to bring it forth. You need to speak it forth. You need to speak it forth. 36 and 37, Matthew 12, 36 and 37 says, everybody's going to have to give an account. Everybody. Everybody. That includes, yeah. I guess I'm an everybody. You might be an everybody too. Yeah. But you're going to have to give an account for the words you use because by your words, you, you, you and I, we bring judgment. That's right. Our words bring judgment. And we're either, being, we're either justifying or we are condemning. Wow. Okay? Man, it's going to get worse. Oh, things are bad. Oh, we got to do this. Oh, this is... Praise God, we live in a free country. Come on. Mm. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. 
Praise God the church is rising up. Praise God miracles are happening everywhere. <laughs> Praise God the kingdom is growing every day. Praise God. Praise God we're here today. Praise the Lord we're strong in our bodies. Praise the Lord we're sharp in our minds. Pray, praise the Lord our children are going to... Oh, oh, you know what? Wealth and riches are in my house and my children. I'm going to... So, let's talk about Psalms. Let's, just be, let's begin to declare the word of the Lord. No plague shall become nigh my dwelling. My children are going to be known in the land. I'm going to speak forth the word. You know, because we have a response. Okay, listen to the word. Response ability. <laughs> You have the ability to respond. You have the ability. Romans 12, 2 says you have the ability to choose. You can be conformed. You can condemn. You can speak death. Or you can choose life. You can speak the word in life. You can speak justification. You can speak reconciliation. You can speak the truth of God's word. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. Okay? And when we choose life, we speak it. We speak it. We speak it. We choose it for ourselves. Okay? And, the, and when we choose that fruit, the fruit of our mouth, when we choose that fruit, it says, it says, it says our stomachs are going to be satisfied. I'm going to be satisfied with the, the fruit that I choose. I'm telling you what, if you're choosing death, you're not going to be very fulfilled with that. I'm just going to tell you. But you will get what you expect. I'm going to let you know there's a secret to life. <laughs> you don't get what you want. You get what you expect. Amen. All right? Yeah. Wow. It's the truth. You, you might want life, but if you expect death, mm -mm 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 -mm, don't be surprised by what you get. <laughs> Just letting you know this how it works. All right? We got to choose and choose, choose wisely, you know, and, and, and sometimes we got to think about this choice. It's, 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 it's simple. You know, you look at me, you, we, look, we look back at Deuteronomy 28 and he said, I set before you blessings and curses. Lord is speaking. I set before you blessings and curses. I set before you life and death. And then he goes and he makes it really simple. He says, choose life. In case you haven't figured it out up to this point, <laughs> choose life. And that's what he's saying to us today. In case you haven't figured it up till this point, choose life. It's a choice. It's a choice. You don't have to, you, you know, you don't have to be stuck in the same rut that you used to be stuck in. You don't have to be stuck in that anymore. You can choose reconciliation. You can choose transformation. Okay? You, but, but, but it's a choice. We, you know... Look at the life of Joseph. He got betrayed by his brothers, thrown in a pit, sold into slavery, but he chose life. Everything prospered in Potiphar's house because Joseph was there. He said, Potiphar didn't even give thought to anything. He just thought about what he was going to eat for dinner because Joseph was running the show. Why did Joseph live that life? And it said, and it said Joseph, Joseph was a prosperous man. Scripture says Joseph was a prosperous man. He's a slave. Hi, a prosperous man. What? Because he was choosing. He was choosing life. He was standing on the promises of God's word to him. He stood firm. He stood firm. He didn't go in, he didn't fall back and say, man, I can't believe they did this to me. This is awful. Then when Potiphar's wife betrays him, d d lies about him. Then he gets thrown into prison. What does Joseph do? That blankety blank, blank. No, no, no. That's not what he did. He didn't go to cursing. He didn't go to condemning. He didn't go to feeling bad for himself. Yeah. He said, well, it's a new opportunity. <laughs> and he rose to the top again of prison. Man, I was talking to some, some, some uh, gentleman yesterday who was talking about when he was in prison, he got born again, and all of a sudden he said, wow, it was awesome. <laughs> it was the same prison, <laughs> okay? What made the difference? It was a spirit of God in him. Yes. What made the difference with the life of Joseph? It was a spirit of God yes. in him. Amen. It was his attitude. Yes. It, was his, it was a purposeful choice yes. to choose life. So he gets out of prison. And, he, and he's running the country. 
He's running the country. Why? Because he kept choosing his path. You choose your path. You know, go back to James 3, 4. The, the scripture says, regardless of how strong the winds blow, you set, you set your sail. Your rudder determines where you go, not the circumstances. Okay? Jesus said, Matthew 28, Matthew 28, or uh, in Matthew 11, 20, 29, 30, Jesus said, learn from me. Learn from me. John 14, Jesus said, the works I do are not my own. It is the Father in me doing the work. I only speak the word. He speaks the word of the kingdom. He speaks the word of the kingdom. When Jesus spoke the word in faith, which is only what he did, he only spoke the word. Jesus wasn't like, he wasn't, he wasn't throwing up Hail Mary, Hail Mary prayers, okay? You know what I mean by that? He, was, he wasn't just throwing it against the wall hoping it stuck, okay? Jesus spoke the word in faith. Amen. He spoke, it was in faith. Jesus didn't say something he didn't want to see. He spoke it in faith. He said, learn from me. Learn from me. Why? Because his burden, and his burden was easy. His, his yoke was easy. His burden was light. Was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. If Jesus is our example, we got to learn from him. Wow. We got to learn from him. Where was Jesus when his parents went looking for him? He was in the temple reading the word. He said, well, don't you know I got to be about my father's business? Wow. wow. He was renewing his mind. He was choosing his, de- he was choosing his identity. We have to choose our identity. Don't let someone else tell you who you are. Let the word, let, 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 let your heavenly father define you. Let your heavenly father define you. Do not let someone else de- tell you who you are. You let the word of God and the spirit of revelation, the Holy Spirit within you, tell you who you are. Because that's the truth. That, that your past does not tell you who you are. Your past tells you what you left. That's why it's called past. You pass that, <laughs> man. Your past, dis- your past mistakes don't define you. It's past. Yeah. You know, it's, the, the word says, God has, he has, he has, he, he has blotted out your sin. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, if I was wearing a white pair of pants, more than likely, and I'm just letting you know how it goes with me in white pants, or white anything, I would have need to blot some things out at the end of the day. You know, maybe some coffee, maybe some blueberries, maybe who knows what. But when you blot something out, you put it on. It's gone. Okay? Blotting, it's gone. It doesn't say, and God took some white out and he painted over your sin and it's still there. (laughs) No, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. You can learn from your past, but don't be stuck in it. You learn from that, but don't be stuck in it. Because according to the word of God and according to the way your father sees you, it's gone. It's gone. You're defined by him. You're defined by your royal identity. You're defined by the spirit of God in you. Listen to this. Praise God. Did you guys get to uh, John 16 yet? (laughs) <laughs> verse 12 <laughs> I have much more to say praise God <laughs> more than you can hear but when, the, when, but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth he will not speak on his own where did we hear this before John 14 yes, that's not me speaking the spirit of truth is in you The spirit of truth is in you. It's in you. He's not going to speak on his own. He is going to tell you only what he hears, and he will tell you what is to come. Wow. Listen to this. What's to come? I'll I'll let you know. He will glorify me, just what Jesus says. Jesus says, he will glorify me because it is for me, Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will receive what he will make known to you. Okay? Okay. And it's important to understand that this verse, this, the word known here, isn't like, isn't like, oh, Judy, let me, let me tell you about this Kleenex box. And we use Kleenex boxes. Let me tell you about this Kleenex box. 
Actually, I know how good you catch. I'm not saying anything. You're, you've told me about this last night. Okay, let me tell you about this Kleenex box, Melissa. Okay, let me tell you about this. Uh, it's a box, and it's got Kleenex in it. No, it's not like known like that. It's like, here, check out that Kleenex box. That's what, it's, it's, it's not talking about just telling you about it. It's about you knowing what it's, it's about. It's about the Spirit's going to give it to you. The Spirit's going to give it to you so you get it. Okay, let's go back and read that again. The Spirit is going to take from Jesus. It's going to glorify Jesus. How is the Spirit going to glorify Jesus? Because the Spirit's going to receive, the Holy Spirit's going to receive from Jesus. Wait a minute. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus is the rightful owner of everything. Do we? Jesus is the rightful owner of everything. The Spirit's going to receive what you need from Jesus, who is the rightful owner of everything, and he's going to tell you about it. Because when you get to heaven, you finally get it. Wow. No. You are in heavenly places right now. You are seated in heavenly places. The Spirit's going to take what Jesus has, and all things that belong to the Father belong to Jesus, and he's going to give them to you. Amen. Because you are co-heirs with Christ. Yes. Amen. So Jesus is glorified when you receive the revelation. And when you have the manifestation, Jesus is glorified. The Father is glorified. Wow. 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 So that's all creation is groaning yes. for your manifestation, for you to receive the revelation of the kingdom, for you to receive the revelation of your royal identity. Okay. Uh, verse 14. Um, he will, he will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known. And that the word known is no. He's gonna, you're going to experience. He's going to share it with you. He's going to give it to you. He's not just going to tell you about it. He's going to let you experience what belongs to the Father. All that belong to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Wow. All that belong to the Father is Jesus. All that belong to the Father is yours in Christ Jesus. Everything you need for life and godliness. Everything you need for life and godliness. Everything. God has called you, 2 Peter 1, 3, and 4. God has called you and I and you. <laughs> he has called you to be a participant in his divine nature. His divine nature, his divine nature that puts his foot down and says, enough is enough. Yeah, enough is enough. We want breakthrough, we want revelation knowledge, and we want it now. Come on. Yes. His divine nature says, yes. kingdom come, your will be done. His divine nature says, be healed in the name of Jesus. His divine nature says, we break the chains of addiction in the name of Jesus. That's what his divine, and that's what you're called to participate in. I mean, we can't. We can't, we can't put it back on God. Oh, if it be your will, God. Well, we know that, you know, why the, God's allowing this to happen in your life for some reason, and we may not understand. Yeah. Show me that verse. Show me that in the life of Jesus. Show me that where Jesus said, mm -hmm. I guess there was a reason for this happening. No. The only... <laughs> Matthew, John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief yes. comes to steal. That's right. He stole the image of God, and he made God. Religion has an image of God that looks a lot like us. Because we've brought religion, religious thinking brings God down to our level. Wow. Jesus came to bring us up. <laughs> to his level. Yes. Amen. He came down to us so we could be elevated back up Amen. to our heavenly status. Amen. So now we're in this position of kings and priests. Colossians 3 makes it clear. We are seated in heavenly places. Amen. We need to set our hearts and our minds on what is above. Why do I know what's above? I know what's above through the word. And the spirit brings me revelation. There is no sickness. There is no poverty. There is no discrimination. None of that exists in heaven. Not, not, a, not, a, not an ounce. It's not there. That's what we have here. But we got to speak it forth. 
We got to demonstrate it. We got to expect it. I'm telling you, you do not get what you want. You get what you expect. What do you expect, brothers and sisters? What do you expect? I expect best. I expect best, best, best. Not better. I expect the best. Okay, I'm going to let you know. Better is the enemy of best. Oh, it'll get better. No, I want the best. That's what the Father has for you. That's what the Father has for you. When the, when the prodigal son came home, the father didn't sing, say, oh, oh, wait, here comes my son. Bring out that better robe. No, 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 not that one. Not, that's too nice. The, the, yeah, that one, that one. Bring out, the, bring out the better robe. No, he didn't say that. Bring out the best. Bring out the best. You got to expect it. This is, we, I'm letting you know. Faith. Okay, 2 Peter 1, 3. Everything you need for life and godliness, godliness, godliness. This is not talking about like, oh, I'm so holy, look at me. No, this is godliness, like yeah. walking on water. That's godliness, right? <laughs> Healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, saying, casting it over there. Okay, we need some more help to get this in. That's godliness. Jesus demonstrated godliness. He demonstrated godliness drinking <laughs> Sorry, I let that slip. Making wine, making wine. I don't know if Jesus drank any wine at the wedding. I'm just going to say he made the best wine. But he did hang out with the prostitutes and the sinners. And he was a cl- cl- accused of being a drunkard and a glutton. Jesus demonstrated godliness. Okay? <laughs> he drank the new wine, praise the Lord. Jesus demonstrated godliness, and it didn't look like our, uh, some of our religious piety that we see people trying to demonstrate today. It looked like saying, okay, fill him up. Take a, take a scoop and give it to the guy. It looked like creating the best. Yes. It, looked like, it, it, it looked like when the woman with the issue of blood that was supposed to be locked in her house for, for violating the law touched him. It looked like, whoa, who touched me? That's godliness. Godliness is having so much kingdom manifestation, kingdom power, that when people put a demand, a, a, a demand that the manifestation can't help but burst forth. That's godliness. That's, Peter demonstrated godliness walking down the sidewalk. And a shadow touched somebody and they get healed. That's godliness. Okay? Godliness doesn't mean acting pious. Godliness means being like God. We've been given everything we need for life. Yeah. Then that's, <clears throat> that word for life is the word sozo. It's not just like, I have a heartbeat and I'm breathing. No, it's, it's life. It's saved, healed, delivered, yeah. prospered, yeah. being elevated to the zoe life, yeah. the life you can only have when you're in connection with the Father. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this life in godliness. Everything we need yes. is in us, in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So when we, when we begin to study and meditate and, and, and let the Spirit bring revelation and, 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 and transformation to our thinking, uh, John, 3 John 1, 2 bursts forth, and all of a sudden I begin to prosper in all things and be in good health. Why? Because my soul is prospering. Because yes. I've learned from Jesus. Yeah. Because he wasn't all toiling and stressed out up here. He was like, man, I got everything I need for life and godliness. Because yeah. I'm the child, I'm the son of God. Yeah. I got the word of God in me. I speak the word and the Father does the work. When people touch me, miracles happen. When, people, when, when, when the storm gets rough, I just walk on the water. Okay, that's godliness. That's what you and I have right now. Okay, it's in us. We just need to draw it out through the words that we speak. Okay, so, and, and so, okay. When faith puts a demand on grace. Okay, so everything I was just talking about is available through the grace of God. Yes. Everything is abundant supply of grace in us. It's a, it's a, it's a huge reservoir. Amen. Yes. And, and, and it's, it's just, you got more in you than you got on the outside. Amen. Okay, so we got this reservoir of grace that says when faith puts a demand on it, it happens. Amen. Okay. The thing that we have to understand as kingdom citizens, as royalty, is that faith is always right now. You put faith into a future tense, and it has become hope. I'm hoping this is going to happen, and hope is great. It's a great thing to do, but faith makes the things hoped for manifest. Faith takes hope and says, that's today. 
That's today. Like the song we were singing, there's no place, nothing better than right now. Yes. Right now. That's faith. The woman that had the issue of blood, when she touches the hem of his garment, she wasn't saying, I'm going to get healed tomorrow if I touch the hem of his garment. She said, right now. It's going to happen right now. It's going to happen right now. And it happened. And Jesus said, whoa, what was that? Somebody touched me. Something happened. He didn't. Do, do, do you guys see this? It, it was not a premeditated healing. It was the abundance of grace. And a demand being put on that grace. Faith takes what grace provides. Okay. When you look at the woman, that, that, the, the, uh, the, the woman who was not a, not a Hebrew, but she came to Jesus and she said, oh, my daughter is, you know, my, my child is afflicted. And Jesus said, hey, I, I'm sorry. I've only come for the lost of Israel. Like this is outside my scope. I call that BS. Beyond the scope. This is BS. Sorry, lady. This is BS. This is beyond the scope. And, and she said, but even the dogs get to eat the scraps from the master's table. And Jesus says, oh, you just took it. <laughs> uh, you just took it. Because <laughs> he couldn't stop it. That's what's in you. That's what's in you. Yes, you know, when we, when we, sing, we sing a song, and I love the song, when you, when you walk in the room, everything changes. He's in you. When you walk in the room, everything changes because he's in you. You are the, you are the thermostat, not the thermometer. You set the temperature. Okay? That's what you are because he's in you. But when we get this revelation and we get this revelation like whatever I need for life and guidance, whoa, here it comes. I'm just going to put a demand because it's called faith. Okay, we don't say, Jesus didn't say, oh, Father, if it be your will, have Lazarus come forth. Because, you know, if that was his prayer, he would have just left the stone on the grave because it was stinky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he says, take the stone away. No, he's stinky. Take the stone away. You're about to see something. You're about to see something happen here. Because the scripture says he knew what he was going to do. Yeah. He knew it. Yeah. What was he going to do? He was going to speak the word and let the Father do the work. Exactly. <laughs> he was going to say, Lazarus, come forth. And then Lazarus comes up, bouncing up there like Rue, <laughs> all wrapped up in those grave clothes, you know. Wow. But that was the expectation. Jesus wasn't just throwing it against the wall saying, if I pray for enough people, somebody's going to get healed. <laughs> Hey, that's a good place to start, um, right. <laughs> if that's where you got to start. Right. But Jesus had an expectation because he was, the, he was the fullness of grace. He was the person of grace. Man, when you are in this kingdom, that is who you have become, okay? So his spirit, okay, Just, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Galatians 4, I'm just going to read this. <clears throat> but when the set time had fully come, hallelujah, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were born under the law, that we might re receive sonship, because you are his sons. God has sent his spirit of his son into your hearts, and the spirit cries, Abba, Father. The spirit of the living Lord Jesus Christ is in you right now, and he's crying, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, Abba, Father. The spirit. Jesus came, Jesus came, Jesus came to bring the kingdom. Jesus came to bring revelation of the Father. Jesus came to let the Father be known. Now that spirit is in you. And the spirit is crying out, Abba, Father, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. <laughs> That's you. You are here to bring the kingdom of heaven. You are here to bring the revelation of the Father. You are here to become the manifestation, a walking storehouse, an, a walking storehouse of heaven, heaven being released into your community. Amen. Whew. Wow. Well, I, Jesus, 
right now faith. We need faith for the right now. Right now. Right now. Not like someday this is going to happen and it'll be great. Not, and, we, and so I'm saying we certainly cannot be cursing ourselves. We certainly cannot be cursing our country. We certainly not, don't, do not back it up. Back it up. You're backing up. No more cursing. Don't speak what you don't want to see. Now you're going to speak life only and you're going to speak it right now. Not someday it's going to get better. Today it ends. Today the kingdom has come. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Receive your prosperity. This is where we are. This is who you are. Is Christ Jesus in you? This is not a future event. It is current. This is not the good prophecy. It is the good news. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. All right. We're done. We're done. What? Yeah, I know. I'm Praise the Lord. We love you. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Bring forth the kingdom. Woo!